Let's turn to number 
when he would try to come against one of us, he's going to try to attack us in that area of what he can determine is an area of vulnerability. What did he do? What did David do with Goliath? What did God do through David actually through Goliath? Popped him right, right in that area of vulnerability through that arm. But it popped him in his forehead. He fell to the ground in an instant. And then David used that sword and chopped off that head of, of Goliath. But that's what the, the enemy would look to do, is look for an area of, of vulnerability. So we're about to go to Ephesians chapter 6. And as we read this, just keep in mind that it was probably uh, a Roman soldier that, uh, that the Apostle Paul had in mind when he went, you know, as the Holy Spirit was guiding him to pen this Ephesians chapter 6 to us. So let's look at Ephesians 6, beginning with verse 10. We'll go through verse 18. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the, and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming dark to the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Then Paul goes on and he adds something very important here in verse 18. Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So we're told here in this passage to be, to be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. We're instructed to put on this whole armor of God so that we may be able to stand against these wiles of the devil. But in order to know... You know, in order to be able to put on this whole armor, we've got to know what the armor consists of. And, and, and we just read that, but we have to know it. We have to know what the armor is. And, and like I said, as believers in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ, whether we realize it or not, we are in a we are in the Lord's army, and there's a constant battle in the spirit realm going on. And if we're not using that armor, and if we're not you know, if we're not praying, uh, you know, there's no way we can be victorious if, if we're not going to use what's already been provided and been given to us. And you know, we don't put on armor unless we're either in training or we're in combat. But for the believer, it's both. We're, we're constantly undergoing training and battle at the same time. share with you an incident, something that, uh, that, I, that I saw happen. And it was actually uh, an incident where we had, uh, this is when I was in the prison setting. Oh, thank you. And we had, uh, we had about 200 guys that were all out on the recreation yard. They wouldn't come off of them. They stayed out there where I remember it was a couple of days. And it, it caused major, major problems. And so uh, we ended up having to recruit uh, <coughs> officers from a facility 45 minutes away, another one north of there 45 minutes away, another one an hour and 45 minutes away. We had officers from four different facilities to come in to try to, to, to quench this situation. I admit I've never seen anything like that. But I was there that day and... For whatever reason, I decided that I was going to observe what was going to go on. I saw things that I've never, like I said, I never saw in my life. I, I saw them come through, and they had the shields, and they had all the tactical gear on. I saw a little bit of that before, but nothing to this degree. And and they and, and that, 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 that pack team, you know, uh, they all got together. They 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 grouped they grouped up and all that. And decided what they was going to do, and they went out on that field. But about 75 or 80 of these men and women, all fully geared up from head to toe in this tactical gear, they all stand in lines, and they were doing like this motion that they were going, they were going. They were all doing 
of 75 or 80 of them doing that right there. Right? No. It was life. And it was to intimidate to let, that, to, let, to let all those offenders out there that were doing what they shouldn't be doing, that we mean business and we're going to take care of this situation. And you are going to have to succumb to what we're about to do. You're going to submit to our authority. And we have to be like that with the enemy when he tries to put things on our life. We have to let him know, look, I stand on the word of God and I know who I am in the Lord. I know who this, I know the power of God and I know the power of his word. You're going to have to obey it. You're going to have to. The Bible says, you know, that, 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 uh, you know, that, that, that enemy, he will tuck, that he has to flee. He has to, you know, we have to use the word of God. You know, the Bible tells us to resist the enemy and he will flee. Now, what will cause him to flee is the word of God. That's what we have to use. But back to that situation, all those, all those, <coughs> that tag team was out there on this recreation yard. And, and they began to use pepper balls. And I mean, there was like these guns and stuff I'd never saw them use before. Never even saw them pull that out. Didn't even know they had it. But they had that out there and there. And they, they used some of that stuff. And these guys started getting popped with that. They started taking off running and, and can't see where they're going. I guess some of the guys in their eyes ran slap into a, to, to like a hurricane fence. Bam, just knock them, just slap out and you know where they're at. Having seizures and all kinds of stuff and got hit by that. It was some really bad stuff. <clears throat> I remember it frightened me. I'll be honest with you, it scared me. I never seen anything like it. I hope I never seen anything like it again. Well, I'm actually out on the sidewalk and there was another guy. I won't be, I won't be like Brother Steve on this one. He was a big dude, I mean. He was and he's standing there beside me, a good friend of mine. Now, and uh this one guy broke through that fence, and he came up, and it happened so fast. It, he, he just, he started swinging like that. And it happened so fast, I don't know how in the world, it hadn't been a God thing. That gentleman beside me put him down and put some weight on him and apprehended him until he could get taken care of. But what we don't realize is that same kind of deal that I just described, that incident, that kind of stuff like that happens in the spirit realm all the time. And that's why we are to pray without ceasing. So, so what is it that we're wrestling against? I want to just dig into this a little bit more. The Apostle Paul tells us that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the principalities, against the authorities, the powers, all the cosmic powers, world rulers, over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Just quite simply, we're wrestling against forces of evil. These principalities that, that, that probably indicates fallen angels uh, that held on to the rank of ruling dignitaries. There's rebellious spirits here that are referred to as powers, suggesting they have authority to exercise such rule. And this third phrase mentioned here in this passage refers to the evil religious world rulers, sphere of dominion over which they exert their usurped sway within the limits that they have been permitted. Remember that when David, excuse me, when Daniel had prayed for that period of 21 days. Remember what he was told? He said, I, that he was told, I have come by your words. It was the, he, you know, there, it was the answer to his prayer. But he was told that, 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 that he had been battling against the Prince of Persia. That messenger that came to him. And then that's why he was hindered for that 21 days. But it also, that, it, it also says that he was going to be dealing with the, the Prince of Greece, too. If you look at Daniel 10, verse 21. So, and the reason I share that is to try to elaborate here and just to help us understand that sometimes there's like regional strongholds of dominion with stuff and that's and then what, what was going on even in Daniel's time. Well, why would it be any bit different today? It's not. It's still the same stuff that was going on then. There's nothing new under the sun. Same stuff. Same evil that was going on back then, same evil going on now. But we got to do our job and then fight against it. And keep on this spiritual armor. Because if we try to fight it in our own strength, we're going to be defeated just like the life was every time. So let's not miss any of this spiritual armor. We're just going to reiterate the belt of truth, the, the, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, our feet being shot with the preparation of the gospel, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The helmet of salvation, in case I didn't call that one out. But then, then it goes on to Paul. He adds here, even though it's not part of this spiritual armor that he's using as a, as a metaphor, in a sense, if you will, 
to, to make a spiritual connection or an understanding here to tell us about the <coughs> spiritual armor that we have, liken it to us to what an armor that a, that a soldier would actually have in the natural. But he, he talks about prayer. And, and prayer, <coughs> is, even though different commentators, pastors, they, they don't lump it in that, in that same category, and I understand why. Because we put on the armor. Prayer is something we do. But again, we put on the armor, but prayer is something we do. <coughs> and this command here to put it on, it's a, it's a necessity for the believer. But you know, the armor don't do a soldier any good if he don't have the will to put it on. It's wasted armor, basically. There's one, there's one quote that I ran across, and I'll share it with you. It says, soldiers have an invincible courage when they have confidence in, their, in the skill and bravery of their leader and the power of his might, in which they are strong, has proved its vigor in routing the same foes which they are summoned to encounter. You know, when I read that, one of the things that popped in my mind or time I took was about George Washington. I, I read that when, when, when there was battle going on, he was out there as a leader, and one of the things he was doing, he was holding up one pray, hand and pray. He would be praying while the battle was going on. We're talking about to help get you some confidence. But as the captain of salvation, he's full of principalities and powers and triumphed over them. And that was the end of that quote. Another thing, this armor, it's... It's the, it, this armor is given, is given to us by the Lord. It's not a man's devising. It's not a man's concoction or anything like that. The Lord is letting us know this is the armor that I have given, I have provided for you to use. You know, and, and man always try to figure out some other kind of thing or situation or something else that's going to work a lot of times other than what God's Word says. There's churches out there today is nothing more than a social club because they're not willing to preach this word and not tell people that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation. They come up with another different kind of way to do stuff. But if it's not God's way, it's not God's method, and it's not going to work. Oh, yeah, it might draw a crowd. But do they, do they know the Lord? And to engage in spiritual battle against the schemes and all that of the enemy, we have to know the Word of God and what it says about our spiritual armor and use it. Or it's not going to do us any good and we can't try another way because there's no other way. Nothing else is going to work. You know, but God is not going to put it on for us. It's for us to put it on. So again, God's not going to put it on for us. It's for us to put it on. And I'm just going to use a, a, something that an analogy that, that I thought about. It's just like this. If a, if, a, if a little league coach says, hey, you know what, team, we've got a wonderful donor. And this donor has provided everything. He's provided all the equipment, got everything. He got even, he's even provided bats. He's, he's got, he provided the balls, gloves, everything. You name it. All you got to do is wear it, put it on, and use it. Show up to every game and practice. And determine that you're gonna that 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 the opposing team is gonna be defeated by you. That's kind of how the Lord has dealt with us. He's given it to us. We have to approach it. We have to use it. I want to look at this belt of truth just for a moment. John 14, 6 tells us this. Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Romans 13, 14 tells us this, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ to make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. You see, when we put on the Lord Jesus Christ, we're putting on truth. I read something that said that a soldier would start with the, with the belt. I don't know whether that's, that's true or not. I just read that it, it said it started with the belt and then other armor was added to it. But the main thing is, is that we have the armor on and that we're using it. 
And then the, the second one here that the Apostle Paul mentions is the, the, the breastplate of righteousness. You see, Paul didn't desire to have on his own righteousness. He desired to have that righteousness which comes through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. By faith in the Lord. And that's what he tells us in, the, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. He said, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. And no doubt, this is the righteousness, I believe the Apostle Paul is referring to us, to put on as that, as that rest of it. Put on that righteousness that Christ has. And when we are, when, when, and when we are saved, that's what happens to us. We become the righteousness. You know, we, 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 we're in part of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then also, the Apostle Paul, he, the next one he talks about is, the, is having our feet shod with the, the preparation of the gospel of peace. And you know, in order to have a, a firm foot, you've got to have adequate footwear. And I don't know how, if anyone in here has ever sewn any these shoes. I saw them advertised. I didn't buy them or anything. I didn't think about ordering them, except maybe a tiny bit. It was a long time ago. I saw these things. It was these metal, uh, it was like big metal nails, like a bunch of big old nails. And then as you walked, it was supposed to aerate your lawn. <laughs> that's one of these deals where you got to buy it in the next 10 minutes and I've seen it on TV but anyway it had a, I'm sure I'm sure you probably grabbed the ground pretty good yeah it's probably some good stability if you didn't get hung up while you're trying to take the next step mm -hmm. but in order to have a firm footing for the fight so we've got to have all these these cleat type or these these uh, you know uh, shoes with the gospel of peace if you will and there's no way that we can go in battle without having, we can't be engaged in a spiritual battle without peace. Because if we don't have peace, we're going to be anxious. And what does the word tell us? Do not be anxious. But in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, you know, uh, if that, if that, and the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And that's what we got to have. we got to have God's peace. And we will not be victorious in spiritual battle without peace, without God's peace. Because then we get all anxious and we get worked up and we're worried and, and all of that. And we end up finished. But that's what this, the, these heavily studded cleat type shoes, this, this preparation of the gospel of peace gives us. Us that peace. And like I say, remember here, this is metaphors that the Apostle Paul is using, but the spiritual armor is real, as real as anything here. We are prepared for the, the war that we do with the enemy, with Satan, by the realization of this peace with God. And so we have to know that we have to know God's peace and, and walk in it. Now, that peace don't exempt us uh, from active duty, but it sustains us through it. Say so again, the peace that God gives us, His peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. It doesn't exempt us. His peace does not exempt us from active duty, but it sustains us through it. And I do know this, that, you know, soldiers, their morale is high. When they're standing firm in battle and their morale is high, uh, it, it, it's the same thing with believers, that we've got to be assured of our acceptance with God before we can withstand the assaults of the adversary. Mm -hmm. We've got to know who we are in the Lord. And Romans 5.1 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we need to remind us of, of that. My feet are shot with the, with the, with the, with the, with the gospel. With the, you know, been, my feet have been shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because there's some situations that we walk in, if we allow the fleshly nature to begin to just flourish, mm -hmm. we begin to 
lose the realization of that peace that God has given us, we begin to let that peace begin to escape us and allow that, the flat, that old fleshly nature rise up and begin to lose that peace. And we're focusing on the, we start focusing on the situation and whatever thing we're walking through in life at that time instead of focusing on Jesus. That's what we got. We got all the distraction of life and to turn us to God, we got to stay focused on Jesus. I know I'm going at the cross, but it's Jesus and going to the cross and his victory of, you know, the death, hell, and the grave. That's why we have that peace when we believe in him as our Lord and Savior. The next piece of armor is the shield. And that shield is generally about <coughs> four foot tall, about two and a half foot wide. And it, and it, and it offers a, you know, a lot of protection for, 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 the, for, for, the, for, the, uh, for an officer, for a soldier. And that's likened to the faith which, which the believer in Christ is able to quench all of these fiery darts that the enemy is hurling at us. Okay? There was a reason why those darts were fiery. It's because back in those times, when they would shoot, uh, uh, they would shoot that, that fiery dart or that arrow with fire on it, so that way it would have double, double trouble for the enemy that it hit. For that intended target, if it didn't hit the person and kill who they, they were trying to get the enemy, and it was going to set their stuff on fire and burn them down. And that's what that shield of faith penetrates those fiery darts of the enemy that is shot toward us as a believer. And if anybody that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'd be standing there lying and slapped through my teeth if I told you that you're not going to have any flame and arrow shot at you. But let me tell you what, use your shield of faith. Keep your shield of faith and use it. Use it. Because it will block that stuff. If I, if I were to tell you here that everything's just going to be hunky dory and all that, I can say I would be lying through my teeth. I mean, sometimes battle can get bloody, but I can say this. There's a such thing. As, that, it, was, it was bloody when Jesus went to the cross. But let me tell you, it can be it, the, a battle can be bloody, but it, but there's also going to be a victory. There's so, there's somebody that's going to come out victorious, and so it's sometimes it's going to be tough. And I'm, and I'm, I'm just saying that sometimes that's why it says play without ceasing. That's why I'm talking about spiritual armor because it's a real battle. But we have to know that our victory is in Christ Jesus and our faith in His Word, and nothing else. See, David didn't have self-confidence. He didn't have this self-generated confidence, but his faith was in the Lord. And that's where ours have to be. Our, our, as long as our, our faith has to be in the Lord and use that shield of faith that he's given us. The Bible tells us this in Ephesians 2 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own, but it is the gift of God. And so we have to keep in mind that it's our faith in Christ and his word that affords each of us his shield of faith and it counsels those fiery darts of the enemy that he shoots. The next one is the helmet of salvation here in this list. I see somebody put their watch up here again in case I go too long. I guess somebody can figure out which one of y'all that is. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5, verse 8. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love for, and, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. And you know, I believe one, one reason that, uh, that the Lord gives us that helmet of salvation is because that is a lot of time where the enemy tries to penetrate is in our mind. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. Just different things that he will try to put there. Suggestions, whatever. We can do it our own self, but sometimes it's him. We sure don't need to be helping him out now. Mm -hmm. By putting thoughts, you know, letting thoughts go in our mind or thinking our, our own thoughts that's, that's against the Word of God. We're supposed to think on that which is pure and just and, and all of that. You know, we also have the mind of Christ as a believer. So if a thought comes in our mind and you say, no, I have that, and if it's a, a contrary to the Word of God, contrary to what a believer should be thinking, or, you know, thinking about, means to remind ourselves and pray that, Lord, no, I, I thank you, Jesus, that I have the mind of Christ, that you give me the helmet of salvation, and I don't have to dwell on this, and I choose not to. 
I'm going to thank you on your word. Lord, I'm going to thank you on what you're doing in my life. I'm going to thank you on the victory you've given me. See? And move forward in that way. And we sometimes have to tell the enemy, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and you're not going you're, you're to continue to perplex me with thoughts that's not of God. I rebuke you in Jesus' name, and I command you by the word of God to go in Jesus' name. And sometimes, I mean, you've got to be firm and, and, and hit him with that word, but he can't stand that word. Regarding the uh, sword of the Spirit, that's the only offensive weapon that we have as a believer. I know that, you know, y'all would like me to have been able to, a bunch of cowboys and cowgirls, and they would like to me to have been able to say, you know, weapon was a pistol. But <laughs> that, well, they didn't have that thing back then. Now maybe if they'd have had it, maybe the Apostle Paul would have said the pistol you know, was our sword of the Spirit, but it's not. Now don't shoot me anybody. <laughs> but the sword of the Spirit, that, that, that's the Word of God. And we know that uh, Hebrews 4, 12 tells us, For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, and of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. There, I'll say this, there's nothing more powerful than the Word of God. One day the Lord spoke to me recently, He said, He said, uh, he said, I spoke the world into existence through my word. Never forget how powerful my word is. Like, wow. So the word of God is very, very powerful. Powers of darkness, the enemy, Satan, are put to fight by the word of God when it's used. Jesus quoted the word of God to the devil when he was led of the Holy Spirit to be tempted in the wilderness. That's how he overcome. He would use scripture, 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 scripture every time. He would tell him it is written. He would quote. It. That's what we've got to do. We've got to quote the word of God. And I'll tell you this. It talks about prayer at the end of this list of the spiritual armor. And our, our life should be just should be encased, should be wrapped in prayer. But our prayer will be so much more effective if we pray the word. And include the Word of God in your prayer. I'm not saying you got to just strictly pray the Scripture. But include the Word of God in your prayer. It will, your prayer life will be more effective. You find a Scripture or two that stands out to you, write it down. Put it in your wallet or somewhere where you'll look at it. And, and go over that thing several times until you got it in this, this head up here. That way one day you're out somewhere and you ain't got a Bible, you ain't got a phone to look it up, you remember it's good to have some in your arsenal of your memory. That way you can use it in your prayer. I'm trying to share some practical things that will help us tonight. Now Paul, he concludes speaking about the armor by letting those that, 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 that this was addressed to, like I said, it's applicable to all of us, let, letting them know, letting us know that without this this without this state of spiritual preparedness, that we're not going to be complete without this weapon of prayer. And, and, it, and this helps us to understand that persevering prayer is essential to our success in spiritual warfare. And I'll say, without, without, without prayer, we're not going to be successful uh, in spiritual warfare. I might just throw in one more thing and I'm, I'm, I'm coming to it. I'm wrapping it up. When we deal with spiritual warfare, some people can get, have some weird ideas. I'm just being honest. Some people get 
Don't get me wrong. There's a such thing as discernment. We need that as a believer. We, and I believe we all have discernment as a believer. That is also one of the gifts of the Spirit as well. And we need that discernment. We ever need it. We need it now. I believe we're living in the end of the times. You know, I believe we're living in the, in the last days. That, we, that this earth is probably how people are living on. I don't know. But I'm expecting the Lord to come back any time. Let me say this. We've got to bring this to a close. William Coper. If y'all... Some of y'all might recognize that name. I think that he wrote a lot. Of but he, he said this, Restraining prayer, we cease to fight. Prayer makes the Christian's armor bright, and Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. Read it one more time, and that's going to be the closing. Restraining prayer, we cease to fight. Prayer makes the Christian's armor bright, and Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. Uh, you, any of you ever heard that song? That, uh, it's an old song. Walt Mills used to sing it. The devil's in the phone booth. Yeah, the old Southern Gospel song. I say old. It's a Southern Gospel song. I'm not really a singer, but I sung that a few times in the church when I was growing up. And, uh, but basically what that song, it talks about the church is on their knees, loading up their spiritual gun. And put the devil on the run. And the devil goes down to 911. That's what happened. 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 And, uh, but I know this wasn't an evangelistic message tonight, but if you don't know the Lord and Jesus Christ as your Savior, you don't know the Lord, not to live to God tonight. If you make heaven your home, there's no better time to receive Him than now. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. It's God's free gift to you. If you have to receive it. And if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I just would encourage you to come forward and just make sure before you leave here tonight that you know Him as your Lord and Savior. And welcome Him, welcome Jesus into your heart and life. Be the best decision you ever made. Maybe you want to spend a moment or two up here uh, in the, you know, in the, in the altar. Uh, you're welcome to do that as well.